JNN is brought to you by Tender Years Preschool. This week on Jagged News Net, we take an inside look at the direction that cell phones are taking on campus. Sabrina Sardello brings you senior moments. Students show their WASC knowledge. Sports reporter Kenny Hem comes to you from the sports box. And we introduce a new on campus boutique. All this and more on JNN. Good morning, Jags. I'm Julissa Kennedy. And I'm Timothy Gallagher. Today's broadcast is following last night's successful open house, and it seems to have gone pretty well. I think so. The upcoming freshmen look promising. Well, on another note, today's Friday, February 28th. All Renaissance card holders will be rewarded with pizza today at lunch. Our campus is a very progressive cell phone policy, but are the students taking advantage of their privileges? Here's Raquel Houlihan and Matthew Martinez. Cell phones have become a tool used for much more than just communication. Cell phones can be distracting if we use them in the wrong place at the wrong time. On Gregory High's campus, you will see cell phones everywhere due to our unique interpretation of the Modesto City Schools cell phone policy. But when should we not be seeing them? Well, the, the district rule on cell phones says that they're to be off and put away during school hours. And we're, we're considering school hours to be class time. So obviously they should be off and put away while you're in class learning um, because we have extended periods of um, between classes. Um, so we feel like that's an opportunity for you to check, you know, your messages, um, make contact. If it's lunchtime, listen to music, relax a little bit, and um, we think that's working pretty well for us. Um, I have a no tolerance uh, policy for cell phones. Um, I think it distracts the students. Um, I think it's proven that people can't do two things at one time, uh, and I need their attention up here. I need them to be focused. Cell phones are both good and bad because um, and it just really depends on the person and who uses them. If they're using them to, in reference to like education and to the subject that they're learning right at that moment, then it's then it's a good use. I mean, it's technology is useful. Um, but if it's just to play Candy Crush or to text someone, then it's it doesn't really help because it's taking away from what they're learning and what they're supposed to be paying attention to and they won't get it. Um, my cell phone policy is basically when I am lecturing that the cell phones need to be put away, uh, no texting, I don't want to see cell phones at all if I'm in front of the classroom. If we're doing individual work or independent work, I don't mind them having their cell phones out, listening to the music, um, looking things, I actually encourage them to look things up on the internet. I think um, us as a society is at a crossroads where technology is not going away, smartphones aren't going away, in, um, instantaneous um, being able to look things up, uh, Instagram isn't going away. Um, we have to decide what is socially acceptable um, as far as cell phone use. It, when, when is it okay to take out a cell phone? Obviously when a teacher is t talking or your parents are talking to you, it's not acceptable to take out your phone. Sitting in a movie, put your phone away. But as a society, we have to figure out what these rules are going to be. Um, it, it's, it's new to all of us and we have to figure out what direction we're going to go with cell phones. Knowing when and where to use your phone is key. If we use them in the wrong place at the wrong time, then all this technology just becomes a distraction and a harmful tool that we should get rid of. We need to use technology to help us, not harm us. This has been Raquel Houlihan and Matthew Martinez reporting for JNN. Only 200 yearbooks are left for purchase. Buy yours while supplies last. They are currently $80 in the SBO. When they're gone, they're gone. AB testing registration has already opened and will continue until March 17th. Registration will take place in the SBO. And now, here's Sabrina Sardella with Senior Moments. Hey seniors! If any of you are planning on attending MJC next year, there is an application workshop March 5th and B103. You must sign up with Mrs. Shepard in the C-Building office ahead of time in order to attend. If you still haven't ordered your cap and gown, you need to go on to centralvalleygrad.com and take care of that right away. All Disneyland money is due March 3rd, 
whether you're paying your final deposit or in full, it needs to be turned in next Monday. Now it's time for our first senior moments of the year. I'm Morgan Lewis, and my senior moment was during a newspaper when I had to do an interview for the Challenged Athletes story. And it was when I was really getting into newspaper, but I still didn't have like a real reason to be in journalism besides my grade. So I set up an interview the next day, and I went over, it was uh, Miss Abshar and Miss Burford, I believe. And during the interview, at the beginning, every interview starts out roughly the same. You know, you're kind of like, okay, so I'd like to talk to you about this. Could you give me some, some like starter information? And then you kind of go from there. Um, and so it started out as, you know, we're really proud of these challenged athletes for what they've done. And then they've made, they've made Grigori, uh, they've made Grigori very proud. And, you know, we're really happy for them. And um, a couple, you know, fast forward a couple minutes, a couple questions later. And uh, I hadn't talked for probably about a minute. I was just listening to them talk and um, one of them just started just started going and she it started out just you know yeah we are really proud of these these challenged athletes um, and then she just went into you know it means so much more than that um, to see these challenged uh, kids at school how misunderstood and like almost shunned they are most of the time to see them recognized by the entire school for something that they did, something that they put hard work into and accomplished, uh, it just it, it meant so much to her that she had tears in her eyes and she just she couldn't stop talking uh, until uh, one of the other teachers had to kind of like okay calm down now and she she kind of stepped aside and uh, it was silent for about 30 seconds after that and like during that moment is when I realized that you know journalism means a lot more than just cliche sports quotes and stats. It's, it's about people and their stories and what their stories mean to them. Hi, my name is Lexi Montano and my senior moment is when me and my friends went out to dinner before our last homecoming and at the restaurant we were sitting right next to the fan and we wanted to be rebels and we thought it'd be cool to turn off the fan. So we were like daring each other, like, you do it, no, you do it. And finally one of my friends just did it. And we all started laughing because we thought it was the funniest thing. As time went on, all the workers came out to sing happy birthday to one of the other tables. And my, the same friend that turned the fan off decided to turn the light off too. And all the workers stared back and looked at us. And we were not laughing at all. We were just like staring at each other. We didn't know what to do, we were kind of scared. But in that moment, it made me realize how weird we are and how close we are with each other. And it kind of sums up our friendship because we are weird people, but we don't show it unless we're with each other. And they have definitely made my senior year the best so far. I guess we all get by with a little help from our friends. If you're a senior and these moments sparked a memory, stop by C114 to pitch your story. I'm Sabrina Sodello, and this has been your Senior Moments. Dance production auditions for next year's class will be held Tuesday, March 11th at 3 p.m. in the dance room. Those auditioning must prepare a one minute solo in any dance style to present at the audition. Arrive ready and dressed for dance. Any additional questions, see Ms. Perone in the dance room. The junior class leadership is selling Grigori crewnecks in the SBO. The sweater sports a new design and is on limited sale for $25. All proceeds go towards this year's prom at the Gallo. A group of teachers and admin will be visiting our campus next week. They form what is known as the WASC Committee a group that is evaluating our school on a variety of different levels. If you haven't heard of WASC, you should be familiar with these posters that hang in the classrooms around campus. Jake Bailey has selected a student focus group to test their knowledge in a friendly little competition called Know Your Slows. I'm your host, Jake Bailey. Welcome to Do You Know Your Slows? All right, before we get started, let's meet our contestants. First, we have Kathleen Gonzalez from Modesto, California. Tell us a little about yourself, Kathleen. I am looking for a spicy date to prom. Okay, next we have Tabari Devone from Oakland, California. I plan on being a music producer. And lastly, from Turlock, California, we have Julia Lobo. When I grow up, I want to be a Disney princess. <laughs> All right, on to our first question. In the JAGS acronym, what does the J stand for? The J stands for Journey Towards Graduation and Lifelong Learning, Jake. That is correct. Oh. Yes. 
All right, next question. Under which category would classroom collaboration and participation fall under? A, which stands for actively engage in the classroom, school, and community. That is correct. On for our next question, please tell me what the G in the JAGS acronym stands for. Kathleen? Goal setting focused on student achievement. That is also correct. All right, that sound means we only have time for one last question. Your question is, from the S category. Small learning communities generate... Small learning communities generate... They generate strong relationships. That is correct. We have a winner. That's all the time we have today. I'm Jake Bailey, and this has been Do You Know You're Slow? Congratulations. WASC team visitors will be on campus next week, so be prepared and learn your slows. Want to visit Barcelona, Madrid, and Paris? There are only four spots left for the Europe trip. This trip will take place from June 16th to June 26th. See Mrs. York for details or enroll online on eftours.com and use this tour number. For those of you girls who played basketball this season, there's an awards and pizza party on Friday, March 7th in room L106 during lunch. Contact Coach Sollier if you have any more questions. Coming from the sports box, here's Kenny Hem with the Winter Sports Review. What's up, Gregory High? I'm Kenny Hem, coming from the JNN Sports Box. For this week's sports report, we will be covering all three of our winter sports, followed by interviews with our season's athletes. First up, we jump into varsity wrestling. This year, our wrestlers took second in MMC. We had 10 Gregory wrestlers qualify for divisionals and three qualify for masters. As for individuals, Cadence Mitchell and Andrew Nash play second, and Nick Kerr and Nathan Ayu place first. We interviewed Nathan Ayu and Andrew Nash, who are the only two seniors of the varsity team, about the legacy they've left behind here at Gregory. We had back-to-back -back league titles, and so most people would want to come wrestle for us because we have a good organization for wrestling. Yeah, um, when we started wrestling, um, when we started on the varsity level, we would go to tournaments and everyone would ask, What's Gregory? What's Gregorio? They're saying our name wrong. They didn't know who we were. They had no idea who we were. And now that we've wrestled and we've had good wrestlers, two league titles, we go to wrestling tournaments and not only do they know who we are, but um, we're actually feared. Up next, girls basketball plays second in MMC. This year with an overall record of nine wins and th only three losses. For the second year in a row, our Lady Jags made it to playoffs playing Consumus Oaks in the first round. The Jags played hard, but came up short in the end, 52 to 43. We interviewed Akia Rowland, Emily Van Dyke, and Leslie Lange about their season this year. Well, we took second in league behind Enox, and we made it to playoffs too, so that was a plus. And this was our second year making it to playoffs, which was good. We could start a legacy here at Gregory, being like the first girls varsity basketball team, and be able to start that tradition and. Um, being able to be peers to like the younger girls. And proving to other schools like that a new school can be good. Lastly, our boys basketball placed third in the league this year with an overall record of seven wins and four losses. History seems to be repeating itself as the Jags made it to playoffs for the second year as well. Our Jags matched up against the Vacaville Bulldogs in the first half, but had to head home with a close loss 56 to 48. We caught up with Todd Stewart and Tyler Janitz with an overview of their season. Some lows that happened were some a couple key losses that we had during the season that kind of ruined our chances to get the MMC title again. But we did get a chance to go to the playoffs again, and that was definitely a high. And um, unfortunately, we couldn't come off with the win during playoffs, but it really was a great experience. Yeah, we started off the preseason with a really tough schedule, and we had some really tough games, and we played some good competition around the area. And then in league, you know, we dropped some key away games. That really cost us our opportunity for the league championship, but we still had the opportunity to go to playoffs for the second year in a row. And with this being our third year with varsity sports as a school, it's a really big accomplishment. That's it for the Sports Box this week. I'm Kenny M, signing off. If you were in a winter sport and are transitioning to a spring sport, make sure you have turned in all your sports gear from the prior season. Also, please get your emergency card from your previous coach, as well as the liability form that your parents must sign. A speech tournament will be hosted at Gregory's today and on Saturday. If you are willing to be a timer for the speech event, see Mr. Landes in room C120. Community service hours will be given. Global Club and Pure Vita have teamed up to create an on-campus shop, The Castaway, a boutique that focuses on upcycling clothes. 
Today is the grand opening of the new store on campus, The Castaway, which is a collaboration of students and teachers who have organized an outlet to provide to students in need. The Castaway provides you with any type of clothing, basically from shoes to scarves to glasses or purses or any type of prom dress. Basically help them by taking them in and helping them pick out the right size and what they need. Like if they did a another jacket, they can come in and get a jacket. Their focus is upcycling, which in this case is taking unwanted clothes or items and refurbishing them to give to others. The Global Club is leaving their print on the castaway by incorporating the idea of upcycling. In Global, we want to be known as more than just cans and bottles. Yeah. yeah reusing, refurbishing, all those things are part of you know, sustainable living and we see that, that example in the castaway as a perfect example. Any donations are accepted and are crucial to the success of the store. There are times when kids come up for different things and there aren't things available, so we definitely want to, to do that part. Or if someone has clothes, I mean, by all means, I'll take them in my classroom and once I'm eating, drop them off. Um, it's great if they could be laundered, otherwise we take them home because everything that goes in that store, when it comes out, we want it to be able to be put on that day. Um, if a student wants to donate clothing, they can either go to L206, C115, and N116 and N117. And the teachers will um, deliver them to the store. Those working with the store hope to help as many students as possible with this project. That I would love to form some sort of a, you know, communication between other schools too. If someone's looking for a jacket that's in this size but the school doesn't have it, you know, one of our students might be able to set up some sort of a database or a website design that could do that. Because that's you know, something that Global and Pure Vita, that's what we strive off of is helping other people so this is definitely um, a way that we can achieve our goals. My advice for the people coming into the castaway just come in take as much time as you need and feel welcome. This has been Catherine Siciliani and Jaleesa Kennedy reporting for JNN. The grand opening is today at lunch for staff and students with teacher recommendations. By the way speaking of castaway have you seen the movie? Yes I have with actually. Tom Hanks. Yeah. You know the real ending is after he gets picked up by the container ship, by container. he doesn't go back to his family. Yeah, the container ship. He becomes the captain of the ship, Captain Phillips. And then, of course, Somalian pirates, U.S. Okay. Navy, um, a lot of murder. Anyways, remember, Renaissance is giving pizza today at lunch, so come by and get your slice. And as always, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.